This video is for Activity 1.5, Decision Time. We aren't going to use a data file for this one. We're going to use the completed germ guide app that we had from the previous activity. Before we can do anything to our 1.3 germ guide, make any modifications to it, we want to make sure that we save it under a different name. So we still have our 1.3 germ guide, but then we also have decision time at 1.5. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to projects, save project as, and it will come up with the 1.3 germ guide with the word copy at the end of it. We can go ahead and delete the, the copy there and then come over and change the three to five. So we have A15 germ guide. And then at the very end, you can put your initials on the end like that. Click on OK. And then it, App Inventor will reload. And then you'll see that we have the new name up here on the green bar on the left. And then we can start making our modifications. So before we can continue with activity 1.5, you need to make sure that your 1.3 activity is complete. So if we look at the crowding screen, you should have a title label here that says diseases associated with crowding, uh, along with two buttons, one for measles and one for meningitis. In addition, there's two non-visible components, measles player and meningitis player at the bottom. On the vector screen, it's about the same, except at this time the title label says vector-borne diseases and our two buttons are malaria and uh, dengue fever. And finally, on the water screen, we have waterborne diseases for the title label and cholera and ETEC as our two buttons. And all three of the screens will have two non-visible player components down at the bottom uh, with the name of the, the diseases and the word player. So I'm going to show you how to do the crowding screen uh, code modification and then you're going to follow along with me and then you will do the same thing for the vector screen and the water screen. So we're not going to add any components to the designer screen. We're just going to add some blocks. So if you have your germ guide ready to go, then we're going to go to the block screen. Now on the block screen, you already should have added two sets of blocks here. Uh, one for the measles button that will stop the meningitis player and then start the measles player. So the measles button starts the measles player, stops the other one. Then the meningitis button will start the meningitis player and stop the measles player. The problem with that is that we want to be able to pause the audio and then be able to pick up where we left off and not just stop and then have to start over from the beginning. So in order to do this, we have to use a conditional statement. In App Inventor, conditional statements are in this control group up here. And we have just the one statement here, the if then. Now the if then could take many different forms. We have just the straight if then. We have an if then else. We can add the else into this and see that it becomes an if then else. Or we can have the if then else if, where then we can have multiple tests. And then finally we can have both the else if and the else to have multiple tests. And finally one final, uh, if all of them are false, then we get to this final else here. And by the way, the uh, else if can be in there multiple times. You can have uh, as many tests as you need to have. Now for this particular program, we need to have just the if then else. So there's one test and then two actions. The, the blocks that go uh, to the then part of it are uh, or will be executed when the test evaluates to true. And the else part of this will be run when the test evaluates to false. If you'd like more of a review on conditional statements, I have a, a YouTube video that will be posted in Schoology that I recorded last spring. Uh, it's called uh, Conditional Statements. So what we want to do in 1.5 is look to see if the player is already playing, and if it is playing, then we're just going to pause it. And if it's not playing, then we're going to start it up. So 
what we're going to do is we are going to take the uh, code that's in the measles button out take out these two statements here and we're going to put the if then else statement in its place there the first block we have to find is our test up here and uh, to do that we're going to go down to since this is the measles player we're talking about we're going to go over to the measles player here and we're going to find the one the light green one that says measles player is playing so and we'll put it up in here like this and so now it says if measles player is playing so if it's playing, we want to pause it. If it's not playing, then we want to start it up. So we'll go back down to the measles player here, click on the measles player, and find the purple one that says pause, and we're gonna put that up in the uh, then part of this. So if the measles player is already playing, we're gonna pause it. If it's not playing, then we wanna start it. So then we're going to take this measles player start and put it in the uh, else part of it. Either way, uh, we want to stop uh, the meningitis player from playing. So we're going to put that up here at the top. So now this block of code here says uh, when we press the measles button, we're going to stop the meningitis player if it's playing. Uh, and then we're going to uh, check if the measles player is playing. And then if it is, we're gonna pause it. If it's not, we're gonna stop it. Now we could put another if statement in, around this uh, call meningitis player stop. But since if we do the stop command and it's not playing, it's not gonna do anything. We don't really need it. But we could put if meningitis player is playing, then stop and then do another if. But that's just some unnecessary blocks in this particular case. So that's what we have to do for all of the other buttons that we're going to do here. So for the meningitis button, we're going to do the same thing. Take the code out and then go down to find the meningitis player. And we'll find the meningitis player is playing there. We're also going to need another if statement uh, and make it an if then else. You can also drag out the uh, if then else block. Uh, but the particular version of App Inventor that I'm using doesn't have that. I only have the if then, and then I have to turn it into an if then else. We'll put our meningitis player is playing, and then put our start in the else part. Go over to the meningitis player and grab a pause out of there, put it in then. And then we'll take the measles player and put it up at the top. Okay, so that's all that we need to do for the uh, crowding screen. And then you'll do the same thing for the vector screen and the water screen. And I've already done that here. And you can see that it doesn't really matter where you put the stop, whether it's up at the top or it's in the else part. Uh, as long as it's somewhere before you start the other player. So you can take a look and see what, what to do there. And then finally, in the water screen. Okay, so you need to finish that up. And then you need to test that out, uh, either on the emulator or on the tablet. The sound might not work on the emulator part of it, so you'd be better off connecting it to the tablet through the AI2 companion. Uh, once you have uh, the, the code modified in all three of those screens, then you're going to want to go to Schoology, open up the Google document that's associated with this project, uh, answer the questions and do the activities that are in there. Make sure that you get your screenshots. I'm going to need a screenshot of the crowding screen, both the code screen or the block screen and the designer screen. Uh, if you can't fit all of the blocks on one screen, then you'll have to take multiple screenshots in order to get all the code that's in there. And then you're also going to have to export the file from App Inventor and import it into Schoology. Okay, so if you have any questions about anything else, you can contact me through email. Thanks.